Hey guys, it's your favorite reliability test guy here with another fun-filled action-packed video on reliability tests and validation topics. Today's video is on MIL standard A10H method 514.8 section 6 analysis of results. If you would like to learn more about vibration and shock testing, don't forget to check out my book Master in Vibration and Shock Testing in the link below. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you do, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel. Let's get started. In this video, we will cover physics of failure, including understanding dynamic response and failures, key parameters, and analyzing material properties and failure mechanisms. We will also look at qualification tests, including ensuring compliance with test standards, failure conditions, and why failures require immediate analysis and resolution. We will also cover other tests, beyond qualification and defining test criteria, success and failure benchmarks, measurable and realistic performance goals, and reflecting real-world service conditions. First, let's discuss the physics of failure. When we analyze vibration-related failures, it's not enough to simply note that a part is broken due to fatigue or wear. We must connect the failure to the dynamic response of the component within its environment. Key parameters to evaluate include resonant mode shapes, how the part vibrates in different modes. Every component has natural frequencies at which it tends to vibrate when excited. At these frequencies, the part deforms in specific mode shapes such as bending, torsional, or axial modes. Understanding mode shapes helps to determine how vibrations amplify stresses and whether a part is operating near a critical resonance. Finite element analysis, or FEA, and experimental modal testing are commonly used to map these shapes. Next up is frequencies, dominant vibration frequencies during the test. Components are exposed to a range of excitation frequencies during real-world operation. The dominant vibration frequencies reveal which energy inputs are driving dynamic responses. These frequencies should be compared to natural frequencies to assess resonance risk. Spectrum analysis, or FFT, waterfall plots, and analyzing random data in power spectral density form, or PST, help identify critical frequencies. Dampen values is next, how the material dissipates energy. Dampen measures how quickly a vibrating system returns to rest when the excitation force is removed. Hysteretic or Coulomb Dampen, affecting vibration amplitude and fatigue life. Low Dampen leads to prolonged vibrations and potential resonance amplification, increasing fatigue risk. Methods like logarithmic decrement, half power bandwidth, and experimental testing quantify Dampen values. Next, let's look at dynamic strain distributions. Strain patterns under dynamic loading. Components experience non-uniform strain under vibrations, with high strain regions being the most susceptible to failure. Strain gauges and digital image correlation, or DIC, provide real-time strain mapping under dynamic conditions. Dynamic strain distribution helps identify stress concentrations, crack initiation sites, and fatigue hotspots. Combined with FEA, it validates whether the design can withstand expected vibrational loads. By analyzing these dynamic characteristics, along with traditional material properties and crack initiation sites, we gain a comprehensive understanding of how these environmental vibrations contribute to the failure. Next, we will look at qualification tests. These tests are designed for formal compliance with contract requirements. When defining failure during qualification tests, the standard states that material is deemed to have failed if it suffers permanent deformation or fracture, any fixed part or assembly loosens, a moving part becomes free or sluggish, any control or set-in shifts inappropriately, and if the performance fails to meet specifications under functional conditions. If a failure is observed, the test must be stopped immediately to analyze the root cause. The failed item should then be repaired or replaced. The test is only considered complete when every component has successfully endured the complete test sequence. 
Something important to note is that failures during extended tests that are repaired later do not necessarily denote a test failure, as long as it's meeting your system-specific requirements and criteria for that test. Finally, let's cover testing beyond standard qualification tests. For any other tests, you will want to define a success and failure criteria that is tailored towards the objectives of the test you are looking to perform. Develop test completion criteria that are directly aligned with the purpose of the evaluation. This means setting measurable, realistic benchmarks for a performance that indicate whether the test item meets the intended operational requirements. In practice, whether you're looking to test for endurance, vibration, or shock, the criteria must meet the actual in-service or performance criteria for the material. To recap this video, effective analysis of vibration test results requires a deep understanding of the physics of failure, linking dynamic response to failure mechanisms. Rigid qualification test criteria that define failure and mandate thorough analysis and retesting and tailored success and failure criteria for all other tests. And that's it, folks. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching and have a great day.